Texas. The roof is open, and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. They do it big here in Houston, and a second ago, it was a Texas-sized welcome for their hometown guys. They're fired up and ready to go as they get set to match up with Derek Carr and the Oakland Raiders. Throwing on first down is Carr. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Jonathan Joseph there on the coverage. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now the first round pick from Alabama, Josh Jacobs. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 15 yards on the play, first down. 24th pick in the spring by Oakland was Josh Jacobs. Only rushed for 640 yards last year at Alabama, but when you consider the offensive depth chart they had, it makes it understandable. So young, won't turn 22 until February, and they're really hoping that the veteran presence of 30-year-old Doug Martin can be a guiding light for Jacobs. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. On second down, it's Jacobs. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. So first and second down went in the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. That's complete to Richard, the running back. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard line. Not too bad. As the Texans take the field here again, I, I'm, you know, I'm looking down at the AFC South right now. Houston at 4-2, and two, Colts 3-2, and two, the Jags and Titans 2-4. and four. This is going to be very intriguing as the season unfolds. It certainly is, and think about the upcoming schedule now for Houston because... They're at Indy, division rival, and they'll be battling for first place down the stretch. Home to Oakland, and let's face it, that game has changed dynamics, hasn't it? We thought that was going to be a pretty easy victory for them when the season started. No longer Oakland playing pretty good football, and then they head across the pond to face the Jacksonville Jaguars, another division game. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells. And it's third and short. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Back deep for the Raiders, Dwayne Harris. Fifty-one yards on the punt there. And the Raiders will take over now first and ten. And now Oakland ready to take the field. 
Well, the crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? A Raider first down, 17 yards. And that's a run that will energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Carr. Jones has it. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. First down. So they go from one 42-yard line to the other as they come up now first and 10. From the gun, it's Carr. The open man here, Renfro. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. This game, this matchup, means a little more to the Carr family. Derek Carr's brother, David, of course, the first overall pick in 2002 by these Houston Texans. Spent five years as the Texans starter, and then he would eventually spend six more years as a backup in the league at various spots before calling it a career. On second down now, it's Jacobs. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Zone. It's Carr. His throw caught at about the five. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. So from the two, now they move back to the seven-yard line. First and goal. Carr going to give it to Jacobs. And he is in. Touchdown, Raiders. Touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Extra point by Carlson up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. 
And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. Week six for Carlos Hyde was a big one. It was the Carlos Hyde redemption game let go by the Chiefs just before the start of the season. And he showed them 26 carries, 116 yards and a touchdown in that big victory. They run again with Hyde on first. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. And movement here by one of the Texans up front. In comes the flag. And this offense back to needing 10 yards after the false start. Third and 10. Out of the gun, Watson. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Carl Joseph. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. A good starting spot for the Raiders as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Now Carr. Catch made, it's Moreau. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. On second down, Jacobs. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Throwing his car on third down. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Whitney Merciless barreling in for the sack. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? On is the punt team now as this one sent away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Watch the car. Watch the car. From the end zone, Watson. Sliding out of the pocket, and he'll get nothing out of that one. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. And while he did a good job of sliding around in the pocket, there was nowhere to go with the football, so he had to take off and try and run. He just got back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. Watch a slap, watch a slap, watch a slap. Watson throwing quickly to Hopkins. And he'll take this one up to about the six-yard line. That's 
Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that 10 yards there good enough for a texan first down let's give a little credit there the offensive play caller since that the screen pass was available whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense and it worked very well there for a first down and he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. The first carry now, this is Johnson. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Check, check, 59. Hey, they scared, they scared. Switch it, switch it, switch it. Come here, switch it. On second down, Johnson. And he's able to get more than half of what they needed. That brings up a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. You ain't doing nothing today. From the gun, here's Watson. He finds his target, Fuller. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Now a play fake here on first down. Steps away. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 to first. The last drive, remember, a similar situation. He forced a ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. Rolling to his right. And avoids the contact by sliding. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. On second down, Hyde. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. A shotgun snap for Watson. He'll buy some time right. He can run for it, and he will. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. The first down carry here for Johnson. 
Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Hyde, the lone man in the backfield. Second and one. Watson. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. A five-yard touchdown as they are now on the board here in the first half. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Working from the gun, it's Carr. It's complete to Jones. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. That's it. Big deal. And it's third down. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Shotgun now for Carr. Now he's going to go deep down the left. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A gain of 32 that time. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route, well run, and the football, right on the money. He's going to let this one go deep. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. But depending on the team, they call that an explosive play or a chunk play, the one that they got on the previous one. They tried to go back and get another one, didn't they? They did, but unsuccessful on that second attempt. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Throwing again, Carr. Complete to Jones. And he's gonna be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 18. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Here's Carr. He completes it to Jones. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. 
Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Again, it's Carr. That's going to be caught by Williams for a Raiders touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown grab, and the Raiders have taken the lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that makes the score 14-7. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the 1. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Heading out is the Texans' offense as they get set to take over here. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Watson now to throw. It's complete to Fuller. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Now a first down throw, Watson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, we got a second. Let's look ahead to week seven and what's on the slate. Things start out Thursday night. Kansas City at Denver, divisional battle. Suddenly an interesting game. Kansas City having lost their last two, and Denver now playing defense as we expected. But how about the NFL 100 game of the week? Oakland at Green Bay, a rematch of Super Bowl II. Also had New Orleans at Chicago, and Philly visiting Dallas on Sunday night. That is a huge one in the NFC East. Yeah, both teams 3-3. Three and three. The winner will have the lead in that division. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Third and two, Watson. Finding fouls complete. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping... Those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Watson, off play action. Try to lay one up deep. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the rookie from Clemson, Trayvon Mullen. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. 
when we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. To throw on second and six, Carr. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on to punt for Oakland. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And now out comes Houston. And two picks thrown here in this first half alone. We'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is because the great ones, they'll throw four or five picks. And while it'll hurt their team, it won't hurt their confidence. They'll think something was just wrong with the ball or the wind or something was funny. It's never about them. That's how they stay so into the moment and into the game. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Now that's the defensive coordinator's nightmare right there. You're covering everyone, and the guy's not even the intended receiver ends up making the play. Right place, right time, I guess. When that ball's tipped up in the air like that, you've got to go up and get it. Offense and defense, and in this case, the offense ended up grabbing it. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Back to throw, Watson. They'll roll him out right. He may try and run for this. And he slides to avoid the hit. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. So first and 10 now from the 30. To throw is Watson. And his throw is incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target. And now it's second down. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. Sliding out of the pocket. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Throwing on third down, Watson. This is Johnson, he's got it. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. So the 
ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Here's Watson. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Carlos Hyde was the target, but now it's third and goal. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Now it's Watson. That is caught. Hopkins for the Texans touchdown. The three-yard touchdown pass as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. After nearly 30 minutes of football, that touchdown puts us in a position where if they make the extra point, we're right back to even before we start the second half. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. Couple completions, you string them together. Could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. down is Carr caught by Jones the Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over and on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going they had to punt from deep inside their own territory which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule what they're looking for now is a little more consistency move the ball at least a few times on offense get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field yeah just something to build off of that's what they're looking for here throwing on first down but this one winds up to be incomplete darren waller the intended receiver and it's second down okay now i want to revisit what we were doing earlier contender versus pretender we did the afc let's rock the nfc here starting with the new york giants Pretender, but much improved. Okay, NFC North, how about the Vikings? Contender, no doubt about it. Carolina in the South, what do you think there? Contender and ascending. Okay, the quarterback play has become a good thing for them. Finally, out West, how about the Arizona Cardinals? Pretender, the division's just way too tough. There are three teams better than them. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Now Carr again. Able to find Walter. That's complete. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. 
The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. This is a perfect example of what separates the elite quarterbacks. Has his man open, way too anxious, ends up firing it in there with way too much zip on it. The great ones, they know how to relax and put the appropriate velocity on the football. Let's go, boys, bring it up! So the challenge comes in inside of two minutes, and it gets overturned. And it changes the whole format of what's about to happen because both sides had thought a certain call had been made. Now they have to flip back and start over. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. Last season for Carlson, a bit of a strange rookie year. Won the Vikings job, then was let go week two after going 0 for 3, but he picked things back up. Remember, he was drafted to cure their kicking woes, and he ends up going 0 for 3 against Green Bay, including the potential game winner. Gets cut, picked up by the Raiders, 16 for 17 the rest of the season. I'd say at the end of the year, a pretty good success story. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room, start over. Open man is QT, complete. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. The final shot before the break. Watson going deep for Hopkins. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now out comes Houston. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. A little bit of space there for the first down run, as that's going to get them about five yards. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. On the jet sweep, here comes Fuller. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and they're going to face a third down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. On third down, Watson. He finds his man, Johnson. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. <laughs> a 
So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Now Carr. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Jacobs. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. To throw, it's Carr. Got his man, it's Williams. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 12 yards there and a first down. Like Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams came to the Raiders in March. Came up the coast from L.A. where he caught 41 balls last year with the Chargers. His best year was 2016 when the Chargers were still in San Diego. Over 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns. And the Raiders really have high hopes for this 27-year-old receiver. Carr completes it. And he's taken down inside the 30. 14 yards is the pickup there at a Raider first. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. They run on first down as they get about three. Second and seven, forthcoming. Up to make the stop, the Texans' leading tackler a year ago, Zach Cunningham. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Carr's throw here caught by Williams. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Carr will come up here with a first and 10. And he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. Into the red zone, it's Carr. And this will be caught, Tyrell Williams. And Williams is in for a Raider touchdown. Tyrell Williams, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Raiders able to extend that advantage. Carlson on for the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. They're down now 24-14. Work to do as they come up on a first and 10. 
Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Oh, he tried to pitch it, and the ball's loose. And the Raiders pick it up. And he'll take this down inside the 15-yard line. DeAndre Hopkins, the Pro Bowler, the intended receiver. So after the fumble recovery, it's Carr. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. They'll run it with Jacobs, and he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. Josh Jacobs with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Raiders take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. Carlson now to add the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Looking to throw again on second down. Watson, and that gonna be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. He finds his target, Fuller. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. For many people, that's not your standard play call in that third down situation. But for so many offenses, they just want the ball in the hands of their playmakers in open space. And after he caught it, he did a nice job picking up the first down. A 10th carry for Hyde. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole. And then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off. But you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Watson now to throw. It's complete to Hopkins. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 16 yards on that one, and also a Texan first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. 
Watson now five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Running from the gun, Johnson. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Watson. It's complete to Fuller. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Seven yards there and a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. A shotgun snap for Watson. Stepping up, he'll try and run. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Looked at me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. The pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. Now Watson on third and goal. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. So now fourth and goal, you're trailing by a decent amount here. What are you doing, Coach Davis? Well, I've got to think to myself, just how many more opportunities am I going to have this close and have this chance? I've got to go for it right here. The clock's dwindling on me. Let's go get it done. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will close the gap down to 14. No one attempted or made more field goals than Fairbairn last year. He was 37 of 42. And they were grateful for every one of those that put three points on the board. But I'll guarantee you Bill O'Brien, the head coach, is thinking to himself, we need to use them a lot less in 2019. Let's make sure we score some more touchdowns. Fairbairn now, following the made field goal, he'll send this one away. This fielded at the two. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. They are clicking on all cylinders. They seem to be just scoring at will right now, and that's why they've opened up this big lead. You know, we always talk about getting into the zone, and all athletes are seeking that, aren't they? Where everything is working for them, every move they make works, it clicks, and they are on point right now. Yeah, they are in that zone that you're talking about. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. Darren Waller, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. All right, CD, let's have a little fun. Now that we're into October, I'm going to give you some AFC teams. You tell me quickly, contender or pretender. You ready? Yes, let's do it. All right, let's start in the East. Buffalo. Contender for a wild card spot. Okay, how about the Chargers? Pretender. AFC North, the Steelers. Contender because the AFC North is a jumble. Okay, and then lastly, let's go to the South, the Jacksonville. Pretender. Houston now in control. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Throwing his car on third down. It's caught. Jones. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him a first down. 15 yards that time for the Raiders. 
that was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Carr gives to Rashard. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. The tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, put a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. He's airing it out for Williams. This is caught inside the 15. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Here's A.J. Cole now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on to punt for Oakland. A big rush by the Texans, and they block it. It's picked up. Remember, the ball is live. Pass the 20. And this results in six. Touchdown. In for the score. As his guys are back within a single score. Pardon me, as you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Shotgun now for Carr. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. The sack there by J.J. Watt. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Another try after the first down sack. Carr. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. 
By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Solid gain of 18 and a Raider first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Throw from Carr, complete to Renfro. And he goes out of bounds, just shy of the 45. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Carr now on first down. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Gary and Conlon. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. After the interception, here's Watson. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. In 2018, Deshaun Watson had five fourth-quarter comebacks. Only Drew Brees of the Saints had more with six. Back to the air, Watson on second down. Screen play, Johnson. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Rolling to his right. He can run for it, and he will. Nowhere to go downfield, but he's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock here with a first down. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space, and he takes off. On first and ten, Watson going deep for Hopkins. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Throwing again is Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. That catch good for five. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Now Watson. He'll bite. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Credit the sack there to Arden Key. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You talk about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. 
I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. This is Richard. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. To throw again. Carr. Got his man. That's Tyrell Williams. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 44-yard line. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him, as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. Now Carr. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing again. Carr. It's a screen to Richard. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. Again, they'll throw with Carr. That's complete to Richard, the running back. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Here's A.J. Cole now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis. Or do you prefer ping pong? You know, back and forth like that. But it definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. Now it's Watson. And all this is taken in one-handed. What a catch. And he's going to lose yardage back to his own one-yard line. Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great. And they're fun. They're becoming a little more ho-hum, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on this one-handed catch thing. But I think the gloves have to be helping in a big way. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Not the start to the drive they were looking for. That run doesn't do much at all. No, not at all, and it leaves them with third and long. Black and you know, set. this is the time of game where these drives really, really start to matter. They've got to make some moves. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. Give him nine on the carry, but it's not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Here's Brian Anger now, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone.
We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Raiders offense now. They trot back out. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Now Carr able to find Walter. That's complete. Uh, he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. I can't believe they even let you play. Here's Jacobs on first and ten. Some extra space following the display of power. Down just inside the 45. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. From the 44, Carr. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Try to run for it with Jacobs. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. And here's a big one now. Trying to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Carr. He's got a man open. It's Hunter Renfro. That one a backbreaker as they wind up converting there on fourth. Well, we looked at each other in surprise going for it on fourth down of the fourth quarter with a lead. But, hey, you get it as a coach. You look like a genius. So the next time we see Coach, he's going to say, well, that's why I coach, and that's why you guys talk up there, right? He had the guts to go ahead and go for it, and it paid off. On the ground with a tight end. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Running is Jacobs. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Carr. And that is incomplete. 
Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Back to throw, Carr. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. On third down, here comes Jacobs. And he'll get inside the 10, but he's short of the line he needed. It's a seven-yard run, but it does bring up fourth down. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. The kick by Carlson is good. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So barring something extraordinary here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Yeah, I mean, we've got to find two scores. So, you know, we're not going to exactly move it over there yet. It can be done, but boy, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch for them, isn't it? Yeah, they would have to move incredibly quick and have some luck, too. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the 5. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Watson and the Texans now down by 10. A little over 40 seconds to go. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. Mike. Silver, silver. And now Watson. It's complete to Fuller. A very solid gain of 27. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. Open man is QT, complete. And he's got this down to the 35. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. So long from Houston.